Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet. Welcome back to the Harry Smash. We're into another one of our set of games. And yes, we're starting to... Uh, well, I was about to say we're starting to get into the good stuff, but I mean, there's been good stuff all along. So, yes, we are still in the good stuff. So, let's introduce the players down the bottom left side of the map. It is Mr. Pig. He is from Australia, plays for the Exile 5 team. And I actually, I thought I had his age up here somewhere, I don't know. But anyway, he is down the bottom left side of the map. And he beat Demilove 2-0 to get to this point. So this is in the winner's bracket, round of eight. And Mr. Spear, we don't even need to look at his main base. We'll just look at these two proxy barracks over here. Mr. Spear is from South Korea, not currently part of a team. And he is... He sort of got a free ride into this bracket um, because his opponent, Fenner, didn't show up for the tournament, but that does not mean that he is a walkover by any stretch of the imagination. He is quite an awesome Terran player, and I believe he won uh, Harry Bash 4, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, very, very awesome stuff. Um, before anybody asks me, because somebody will probably ask me at some point, and I'll probably forget, um, Petraeus was seeded number one in this tournament, um, but he was over in Europe at the time this tournament was being run, and he, I think he had like major lag issues because we were playing on like a North American server. So he basically just um, called it off beforehand. He says, yeah, I'm not gonna show up. So he is not participating in this tournament. Uh, he definitely would have made it quite far if he had gone in there. But he was not there, so yeah, there's not much we can say about that. Oh, look at all these workers, man. There are three Marines in the middle of this bunker patch. That is absolutely brutal, man. He's already lost two workers. More of them will start going down. And Spear, oh man. Those Marines starting to go down. The workers really going off here. Looking for the barracks. Went out there, didn't go far enough to see them, but... Sending some links over to the top side as well, where there is a supply depot wall. So, Pig is doing all sorts of crazy stuff here. And he is going to be losing this base though, which is very, very unfortunate. Sending some workers over there. If they go around the long way, they can get back into the main base and sort of get some spine crawlers ready, that sort of thing. He is, I don't know what his intention was, moving these workers out in the first place. Obviously it was something, but I think he's sort of shooting himself in the foot. He needs to sack this base he needs to get a couple of spine crawlers. He needs to start defending the main. Or, if possible, build some spine crawlers on the lower ground. Oh, here we go. A bunch of links coming in. No more workers. They Did they? I think they managed to get all the workers there, which is good. But, yeah, we'll have to see what, the, uh, what they can actually do without worker support here. Going to have a bit of a crack at the bunker, but it's just not enough. Workers trying to repair the uh, supply depot wall up here, actually. They're not doing a bad job, but they're being very, very hard pressed, so... Spear isn't getting a lot of mining done either, but we got a few... Yeah. Both players in yeah, a bit of trouble. There we go. The Queen's still trying so hard. Moving some Marines out there. Going for the bunker. Might be able to take the bunker down this time. It looks like he probably will. There he goes. It's just about to die. Ah, uh, salvaging it at the very last second. I think he is going to be able to salvage it. The hatchery finally goes down, so Pig could not keep up the pressure enough. But the Broodlings actually killing the remainder of the Marines. That's how low the health was of these guys. Managing to get a Marine out here. As he, did he move the... Uh, I think he must have just walked that Marine back because the barracks are still in the air. And Pig holding that off. Lost his hatchery. But we'll see how that's affected uh, different people. Obviously, Spear, 17 over 13 in terms of workers, so he's not a major amount ahead. He hasn't got an expansion. He's just building one now. He's actually building a third base as well. And Spear does seem to like this three-base sort of play where he gets uh, three bases relatively early in the game. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Where is the Marine? It's at the back somewhere. But, oh, man... Can you see this crazy wall that Spear has got going on? He must be like totally paranoid about failings or something at the moment. Or he thinks that Pig is just building a massive amount of anything and just countering to run in there. Which would make some sort of sense because, I mean, 
with all that stuff going on, you'd expect the pig to, to be throwing everything he had into Link production and then getting ready to push out here. And since those guys sort of fell back, after they took out the hatchery, he didn't really see whether there was army or not because the broodlings did most of the damage to the marines. So there could have been a Ling army building up, waiting to come down. And after the marines all de died, that Ling army could be anywhere. And that's what he was scared of, I think. A Ling army running across, potentially with Baneling support. But it's starting to look a little bit clearer that Pig has not done that. In fact, he has switched back to, to uh, fairly decent macro push. So instead of going nuts off there, he did a fairly decent macro push. And I guess he was a bit lucky because he did kill those marines with the broodlings and he didn't really have to build a whole ton of lings to get rid of them. Most players would go up to like 15, 20 lings and then just overrun. Pig never did that. And I suppose you could argue that if he had done that a little bit faster, maybe he wouldn't have lost the hatchery. But regardless, he did have the income and the minerals saved up to push that macro when those marines had, been, had died. So he's still in a pretty good position at the moment. The Ling's going in here, just out of range of the bunker actually, so they might be able to take out a couple workers, might be able to attack that from the other side. Bunch of marines coming back though, very, and this is a bit painful though, because Pig doesn't really have that much of a Ling presence on the map at the moment. So yeah, he's gonna try and hold these guys off. The Queens are at very, very low health. The Ling's going in there, the marines, slowly going down and he has managed to fend it off but it's a it's a case of really <laughs> running on not a lot pig is trying to do the absolute least and still keep his macro as priority number one still get the least amount of lings still get the least amount of everything i like his play style but damn, he should get like a spine crawler or something because he is really cutting this shit close. The uh, queen's at half health, this one's at like a quarter health. He's got a total of bugger all lings on the field. There are hellions on the way. Um, he's really, really, he's starting to get out some lings now, but he has caught up. He is 36 under 37, which is pretty damn good. Hellions coming in, they're going to be having a crack at the queen, at the lings. There's not really much to have a go at these guys. It looks like the queen is finally going to go down. Uh, the Hellions start to take some serious damage from the queens. Having a bit of trouble. Lings having a bit of trouble actually surrounding these guys. They do not want to be surrounded. They want to be running all over the place. Finally gets surrounded on the ramp. Does get taken out. The loss of the queen, obviously not good. But, yeah, it's alright. It's alright. I think Spear... He's still in a pretty good position. Um, yeah, I think he's all right. He's had a bit longer than Pig to get his production up. He's never really been on the back foot, whereas Pig most certainly was on the back foot. Spear was in control the entire time, just pushing out, concentrating, and then he just fell back when he wanted to. Uh, whereas Pig has really, really had to sort of build up and claw his way back into this game. But Pig has an awesome, awesome set of claws, and he is almost... I don't know if it even counts as clawing the rate that Pig has been going, but he's really, really pushed hard. He's up 51 over 47, and he's in a pretty good position. He's got the third base, a little bit behind where he normally would be at this stage of the game, but then again, Spear is as well, so I think it's fine. I'm not sure if Spear is actually ahead anymore. Um, I really, really couldn't say maybe production buildings, but I mean, with three um, hatcheries, that's all that you'd expect the Zerg to have at this point, so I think he's fine. Now, the question is, what sort of tech is he gonna go? That's maybe the biggest thing. He's only just finished a lair at the 14 minute mark. His Bailey's nest is still not up, so his tech has probably been hit the hardest, but we do have the spy coming out. Oh, and his army is still looking a little bit shaky, Pig's army, so dealing with this sort of attack is still a bit of a pain in the ass for him to do because he hasn't really got out... I mean, sometimes, most of the times, a Zerg player at this point in the game, if they're going for muters, they'll also go for a Retron, they'll get some Roaches out, just to deal with crap like this. Because you can't run Lings into this force, they'll get decimated. If you haven't got muters out yet, and muters wouldn't help here anyway. So you really got to have Roaches as a sort of intermediary force to deal with this sort of terror nonsense. But... Pig, of course, has not got roaches. He does have banelings, though, and the banelings are not bad, but that was beautifully played by Spear. Pulled the marines back, left the hellbats out in front, and so many banelings being used up on the hellbats. But still, 
managed to get enough in there to kill those marines, which is very, very nice. So I guess the bailing sort of work out. But yeah, some roaches really, really, really would have been helpful at taking out those hellbats. I mean, in any sort of early mech, hellions, hellbats, blah, 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 blah. Roaches really, really help in that regard. That queen's way out in the middle of nowhere. And Spear has come in with another bunch of forces. So I guess, yeah, it uh, kind of hurt Pig. I mean, that early, early attack from Spear really hurt him. And I thought he was clawing his way back, but he was clawing his way back in the macro. And of course, that did have consequences for his tech choices. Uh, I think he just did a hard push for Spire and just didn't anticipate um, how much Spear was going to hit him, when he was going to hit him, that sort of thing. And it just didn't work out. So if he had gone a little bit further, got the um, got the muters out, and got some more bailing, something like that, maybe. But I think those Hellbats really screwed him over. It was just a plain Marine push before. I think he would have just rolled the bailings in there and done enough. But... That battle with the, the Hellbats, I think the Hellbats soaked up most of that Baneling damage um, until the Hellbats went down and just well played by Spear, absolutely well played. Bit of luck, bit of strategy, and yeah, going into game number two, we will see what's going to happen between these two players, so I'll catch you guys in just a sec. Alright, we are back. Um... Yes, it's pretty good stuff. We've got a hatch into pool coming out for Mr. Pig, so a nice lazy macro approach. We've got barracks first, obviously coming out for spear, saving up a lot, so it looks like he will be going for a command center straight after this. Both players with nice macro heavy starts, and yeah, it should be good. So we're not going to be seeing any of the shenanigans that we saw from the spear last year. Not last year, um, last game. What am I talking about? So anyway, I looked up a little bit more details. Pig is actually 26 years of age. I didn't have his full profile up before, but I do have it now. And yeah, 20, did I say 20? He's 26 years of age, I don't know. Did I say 27? Not sure. And Spear, on the other hand, doesn't have his age, but it does say that he was part of the Micro Gamers team up until November last year. And then he left or stopped playing or something like that. So yes. Very, very awesome stuff. And... Yeah. Just uh, going to be seeing how this game goes. It's going to be a nice... Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure about this map. It can be a nice heavy macro sort of map. But it's not the most heaviest macroist, macro -y, macro macroist sort of map. It's pretty standard. This map's pretty standard. So it's going to be interesting to see what goes on. Doesn't look like anybody's going for anything special at the moment. Couple of links coming out, couple of marines coming out, couple of whatever's coming out. Fast armory, that is interesting. That is very interesting. I do believe this is going to be for Hellbats. Uh, no other reason I can think of, unless Spear decides to go for the uh, age old Thor rush, which I don't see happening. It's, it's got to be for Hellbats at this point. So obviously, he really liked the way that Hellbats went in the previous game, or wants to get more of them. And I don't blame him, because they really, really did work out very well against Pig in the last game. I mean, Banelings, I mean, Banelings are good against Marines, and they're not good against Hellbats. Hell, Hellbats soak up so much of that Baneling damage, and the generally the Zerg player, as we saw with Pig last game, will not run the Banelings into Hellbats. They will pull the Banelings away, look at a better angle to go for the Marines. And that means recalculating, and that means that the Terran player can just push forward and go on. Wow, very nice attack here. Five workers. Is this for pressure? Is this to soak up damage? Is this to build bunkers? A little bit late to build bunkers. There's creep freaking everywhere, but who knows? Who knows what those workers are? It looks like they are just... They're here to heal the Hellions. What? I don't know about that. I guess the... Uh, oh, no! They've been morphed into Hellbats. What a timing attack right there. This is maybe a new sort of timing attack that uh, Spear is developing here. And i got to say, it's a very, very potent one. We've got barely any Bailings out for Mr. Pig. The Hellbats are going nuts on the Queens. The Queens having a lot of trouble trying to get these Hellbats down. The Marines got owned by Bailings, I think, at some point. So Pig, yeah, he kept his focus where he needed to. Just sort of the queens were tanking the hellbats and the hellbats were tanking the queens and meanwhile the Bailey's just sort of shifted in the backside and just took out the marines. 
which is exactly what they're supposed to do. So I love the way that Pig handled that. It could have quite easily been a lot worse if the Banelings or the Lings had run towards the Hellbats instead. That would have been disastrous because the Marines would have just destroyed everything. But Pig kept his cool and everything worked out. But I love that timing attack that Spear pulled out, man. I've never seen that before. And it's so awesome. So we may... Alright, we'll try and analyse it right now. So obviously, um, getting out general sort of play. So you get it out, you get the barracks out nice and early. You get the factory out. And this is a uh, barracks command centre. And then you get the factory out after that. Which is pretty cool. You get the factory with the reactor. Start building Hellions. At that time, you've been building Marines all the time on the single barracks you've got. And that's it. You've got tons of Marines coming out. You get to about four Hellions. And straight after the factory is built, you go for an armory. So you go for an army straight after the factory. That's got to be a bit gas heavy, but you do it anyway. You're, you're just building Marines and Hellions otherwise, so you don't really need the gas for much else. And yeah, then you run out. You've got your four Hellions. You've got eight, ten Marines at that point. And you convert them into Hellbats when you reach your opponent's base. And I'm not sure what time it is, but it could it was like the six minute mark or six, seven minute mark. Pretty damn early in the game. He was over there with like eight, ten marines and four hellbats and against a Zerg player, man. That's hard. If the Zerg player doesn't have banelings, they can get quite screwed at that point. I mean if they've got something like roaches, if they're going for roach tech, they may have like five or six roaches at that point. And in that case. I mean, roaches, the marines will do a pretty decent amount of damage to those roaches and the hellbat will tank a lot of roach damage, so yeah, it's a very, very potent playstyle, so yeah, if you guys are TVZ and you play Terran, man, definitely, definitely check that out because it was an absolutely, absolutely awesome playstyle. And you know what, I'm going to make a note. At the end of this series, um, after I've cast all the games between Pig and Spear, I am going to go back and I am going to go through and analyse that playstyle for you. Maybe a separate video. Yeah, I think a separate video. I think we have to do it as a separate video just to analyse that tactic because I... Oh, it's such an awesome tactic from Mr. Spear. So, yeah. Alright, I'm going to make it myself a note now because I'll forget it by the time I finish casting this game. Oh, let me see, uh, play style, hellbat, timing versus, uh, alright, done. Let's get back into the game, man, we've been seeing some awesome hellbat drops while I've been casting this. Look at these three queens just hiding up there. Uh, the queens are like, you cheap bastard, you couldn't afford a, uh, spore crawler, and Pig is like, well, you know, technically, spore crawlers can't hit ground units, and the queens are like, oh, this is such bullshit. Look at the hellbat still going, man. Are we gonna see a drop? No! One hellbat dies inside the medevac. That's never good. Bunch of hellions coming across here. Let's have a look at the damage so far. 13 workers. Surprisingly low, considering the amount of hellbat drops that have gone down. Like, 12 hellbats. I think... If you add up all the half-beaten drones, he's probably lost like 50 drones so far. He's, lost, he's got like a hundred of them that have taken half damage. Oh, beautiful, beautiful play here from Mr. Fig. The Hellions are actually a tiny, a tiny bit slower than those Lings off creep. On creep, they got no hope, but off creep, they sort of just take little bits and pieces and blah, blah, blah. Here we go. We got the Thor out. We got the Hellbats out. Thor is obviously anticipating. Did I just see three? No, I couldn't have. I think I saw three workers being built. I thought I saw three Thors being built at once. That would be freaking scary. Three Thors at once. Uh, thankfully, we're not seeing that. But we are seeing three factories and one barracks with nothing on it. So it appears that Spear... It appears that Spear is going heavy mech. I don't know. I don't know how many times I'm going to be saying that, but it's probably going to be said a few more times. Not that he's going mech, but it appears that Spear is just such an awesome... I don't know. I, I just like words that rhyme for some reason. Oh, the Banelings. Oh, the tank. I mean, a Banelings without speed and a tank is just like target practice. It's just like, hey, 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 they're not going to shoot back, man. Just blast them all you want. 
are absolutely crazy. So what do we got here? We got a ton of workers. We got a hydra den. We got infestation pit. We've got our fourth base coming out. Oh, it's part of the. Got some banners coming in here. The Ling's going to be thinking about running in, but a couple of Hellbats are going to change their mind. Oh, repair. Repair. No, you suck at your job, SCV. You absolutely suck at it. Oh, he's. Look, one missile turret is not enough. He's going for a couple more here. And he needs them because this gas is being hit and it's about to be destroyed as well as all the workers mining it. Ouch, him, ouch. Takes out the missile turret as he goes, man. Just a nice little parting shot to get rid of it. Building and Is this... No, this is this command series just stopped being built because the workers all died. Income-wise, 88 over 62. So pig with a stupid amount of macro. And... Yeah, Spear's not bad. Spear's, you know, he's got 62. He's happy. On three bases, 62. That's pretty damn good. I wonder if he's going to make this a planetary or an orbital. Or he may just lift it off and then start moving it. Looks like he's lifting it off and making another one there. So it's going to be part of his complete wall. Oh, man. Bunch of links here. He's going to have to move something over there. Bunch of links here as well. Missile turrets cannot shoot down. How awesome would it be if they could? It would just be blowing everything apart. But we got a nice attack here. We do have a swarm host coming out. Oh, the sw first swarm host death of the game. He got that one nice and early. It'll probably save him like a major amount of trouble later on in the game if a uh, swarm host start going crazy. So here we go. A bunch of links. Links continuing to do a crap load of damage here. Really, really crazy stuff. Forcing the lift off. What are we seeing here? Many workers. Yeah, 33 total dead. Spears down to 48. Pig up to 90. I don't know why he's in 90. Um, <laughs> it seems too much even for a Zerg player, but, you know, it's Pig, so... Just... whatever. Whatever. A bunch of Lurkers coming out. PDD is starting to come out. The dreaded point defense drone. And soaking up quite a lot of uh, little Locust fire, which is pretty awesome. The Viking getting out there in the middle of nowhere. These guys coming out, already the Banshee's starting to have a go at the Swarm Host. I believe they did kill another one. Muta's coming out to have a crack at the Thors. Everybody is having a crack at anybody, everybody else right now, but it looks like Spear has a solid sort of play. He's got the tanks for the anti locus he's got the Thors for the Miscellaneous and the Mutas. He's got a single Hellbat who sort of got roped in because the boss said this is a very, very important mission. And now he's at low health and he's like, this is total bullshit. And we got the Raven for the Points Defense Drone. Oh, the tanks starting to get owned. The PDD sort of soaked up a little bit, but there's just too much. And here come the roaches, man. It's like, where's the military music right now? We need a fanfare of some sort to announce the roaches coming into battle and just absolutely getting destroyed by tanks and thors. But they they ran in like a... a like the hammer of God, man. They were like, Wah! and then they all died really quickly because they didn't realize that it doesn't matter how much crazy music you play on your entrance. If you're a tier one unit, you cannot beat tier three units, especially when there's a f decent few of them. So roaches versus Thors. It's good if the roaches outnumber the Thors like five to one. It's not good if you've got six roaches and three Thors. It just doesn't work. Two weapons already, man. Very, very nice. I like this quite a bit. What do we got for upgrades? One, one, and two for Mr. Pig. So he's working on everything he needs to. He's got Muta le weapons level one as well. Should be getting ranged attack soon. Level two ranged attack. Really needs to work on that. He's got enough gas. I don't know why he isn't doing that. Spear going for level three mech weapons. Go on, Pig. Get your upgrades. Um... Yeah, just get him, dude. Come on, come on. There we go. <laughs> he listens to me. Oh, people should listen to me more often, man. They would play better. <laughs> there we go. Nice planetary at the front. Fourth base for Mr. Spear right out in the middle. This is his base. This is his world. He's got a nice sensor tower out there. Not really watching the side, but I suppose when he gets a base over there, he'll be dealing with it. The swarm hosts are out there, right inside the range of the thing. Moving out with Roach Hydras, moving out with Vipers. Would love to yank a couple of tanks, a couple of Thors. Oh, the Thor actually hitting the Viper before he gets to do anything. Very, very nice. The Vikings getting yanked out. Bye-bye, Mr. Vikings. Although those Hydras getting dangerously close to the siege tank range. Oh, bye-bye, Mr. Thor. 
that Banshee, man, getting right out there. But there is a Spore Crawler. It is going to be shooting it. That is not too much fun. It's actually a little bit of pain for Pig to get up here because his Locust run there. And then they've got to sort of hook around the corner of this ramp. You'll see it in just a sec. So they're running straight, going in there. And they sort of have to hook a little bit around there. See, you can see a couple of them off getting caught. So they sort of get funneled in on one side, which slows them down a bit. So it's all to do with the rally point. I think he's got the rally point a little bit cl too close to the edge of the ramp there. And that is causing those locusts to sh slow down a bit. But yeah, it's just uh, tiny things. A couple of roaches still chasing those guys around. So yeah, so the line is there. If the line was there, I don't think he'd have many problems. But then he wouldn't get quite as good an angle on the tank. So it's... Yeah, it's all up there. Where are these guys going? Are they attacking the Hellions or something like that? Did he tell them to attack the Hellions? Ah, uh, whatever. Those guys are going to be useless that wave. So, uh, some nice spine crawlers coming down from Mr. Pig. What is he up to? He's cut down on some workers a little bit. Down to 79. He's probably got like a bunch of spines and spores everywhere. Two more Evo Chambers probably just uh, suck points for the Vipers. Oh man, these Vipers. They need some suck points to get themselves some health because they are freaking low at the moment. But over here, the siege continues. Hellions continue to go in. Workers lost. Holy bejesus. He has lost 89 workers. That is why his worker numbers are going down so much. He's not building stuff. He's just losing them to the goddamn Hellions. He, he needs... Those spine crawlers everywhere, man. He, he's building... Yeah, we go. There's a spine, so that's not bad. More Hellions being sent in. Going around the backside. Running straight into the uh, thingamy bobs, the swarm host. Going straight for this base. Spine crawler doing a great job. But with four Hellions, man, the spine crawler is too slow to take them out. And... Oh, man. What is it? What is it? Three weapons. Blue flame. Holy bejesus. These guys are killing workers. So that's 109 workers right now. Pig, this is like a plague, man. A plague of bloody, uh, whatever the hell those things are called. Plague of bloody hellions, man. Destroying everything. And Pig, he's got a lot banked up, but he's going to have to spend a lot of his lava on workers. Because I think 66 is okay. And he doesn't have to build a lot because, I mean, he's got swarm posts. So, unless he starts losing them, he's okay. But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Is he thinking of something? Oh, there's tanks moving out. Does Mr. Pig know about it? He moves in, yanking some tanks out. A pity if the Locusts were a little bit faster, they could have hit them while they were unseaged. But still, they managed to get out there. And the tanks, were they in range? They were in range of the uh, swarm posts, actually. So, they didn't really get too many hits on the Swarm Post, though, I don't think. I think they were mostly hitting the Locust. Now, the Locust coming in here now, and they're actually going to get a range of the tanks nice and easy. One tank almost going down. But, yeah, very, very... It's hard to see this little line. This little line here, which is where the range of the tanks is. Very, very hard to see that, but it is in there somewhere. Here we go. Tank goes down. Beautiful, beautiful. Going to be having a crack at the other tank as well. Level 3 uh, air weapons and level 3 ground weapons coming out soon. I love to see that level 3 ground weapons with so many um, swarm hosts out there. Not sure what the air weapons are for, because I don't know if he has much air units at this point. And the Vipers are it, but the Vipers should never really be attacking anything. In fact, I don't know if they actually have an attack. They don't. I think in the Heart of the Swarm campaign, they do have an attack. But obviously not in the multiplayer game, which makes more sense, because... You don't really need to attack. We do have Corruptors coming out, and that is going to be awesome. So we could be seeing a full air army on top of the Swarm Host, and Hydras could be taking a back sort of step to these sort of guys. And here we go, moving on in. It needs to reshift over here, does it? Goes for the tanks, and the point defense drones are soaking up so much firepower. Those two tanks easily would have died to that many locusts, easily, but the one of them did stay alive, so great, great job with the point defense drone. Let's have a look at the income. Pig is not worried about income at all. He's got a great amount of income, so much gas, quite a decent amount of minerals. Spear looking very, very similar as well, just keeping the tank production up, which is nice. 
Upgrades wise, we got 3 1, we got 2 3 with 2. Um, yeah, looking very, very good for both players. Um, needs to be getting that armor, but I assume he was at some point. Battle Cruiser tech on the way. We've got investors, although they're not really doing much. Hellions penetrating. What a beautiful timing push there. Somehow managed to skip all of the locusts and hit a couple of infestors at the same point. And now it's basically open season on the workers because there's really not much here to knock the Hellions around. There's a couple of roaches and stuff like that, but that's it. And if you can just keep pushing those workers back eventually, it'll, it'll start to do something. Here we go. Continuous point defense strategy. He's got three of them just sitting there. And are we going in? He's going to try and do some sort of attack, but a sweet-ass fungal lands on all of the Vikings. He's going to chain it for all he is worth. Another fungal, another two fungals. Come on, get the fungal, get the fungal. He's chaining it. Oh, he just missed at the very last second. We're going to need 100 mules down there to repair all these poor bastards, but no air cover anymore, which means that next couple of ways, not going to be getting any point defense drones, any new ones anyway, these ones are still there, but they don't have that many energy, they're going to be used up very, very quickly, and then the locusts start to come down, the vikings got repaired straight away, oh, actually, these are new vikings, sorry, new ravens, he's just building ravens like there's no tomorrow, building thors like there's no tomorrow as well, really, really taking advantage of the fact that mech um, upgrades apply to both air and ground, so... Ah, beautiful drink. <clears throat> and just going nuts, I mean, mech is really, really good now that the upgrades are shared between air and ground. I mean, when it wasn't like that, it was hard to justify going for mech, but now it is a lot easier. Another fungal going down, he didn't quite manage to chain it, before, but he might be able to chain it now. He's doing it a little bit better. There we go. That's it. Beautiful chain. Five Vikings dead just like that. Really nice. It's a pity he could not chain that fungal on the ravens, though. Taking out six ravens would be massive. Absolutely massive. Fisted Terrans going down, taking out the Hellions. Beautiful, beautiful. Scaring them away from the Watchtower, which I really, really like, because who wants the Watchtower watching out for the Infestor movements? You definitely... Do not the, want the infested movements. A couple of nice Viking shots. The uh, Vikings... No, what shots? In, uh, Viper. I keep getting confused. Viking, Viper, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, but... Spear is starting to look a little bit dry here. He's lost a few workers at some point. Probably to uh, this sort of action. Moving out, trying to repair that missile turret while there's locusts everywhere. Yeah. Not sure how... I think those workers are just on auto repair, and they're, they're not doing all that well. And Spear needs, I think he needs all the workers he can get, because he's kind of not doing too well on the macro front. Yeah, he's under a thousand, that's not good. He is, doesn't have any mules out at the moment, and that's not good either. So he's kind of running a bit low. Pig's got a ton of everything, man. He can re-macro forever and ever, which is cool. And, but he is going to start sapping out his bases, so he's going to start thinking about taking this base over sometime soon, I'd say. Maybe not straight away, but sometime soonish. Oh, Battle Cruiser goes down. Couple of Vikings. Where's the fungal? Oh, man. That was such a perfect fungal opportunity right there. Oh, the Raven Bomb going down. Missed the Locust, but did hit a Swarm Host, didn't do too much. Point Defense Drones as well, just soaking up so much firepower here. And, oh man. I would love to see him go in. I, I don't know, Can the, the Corruptors will probably get owned by the uh, Point Defense Drones as well. But, I mean, they've barely got enough energy to fend off one attack. After one attack, they're pretty much all used up in terms of the energy. Oh, they actually build up energy over time. And how much do they use to uh, knock back a locust? Lock back a single point of firepower? I think it's like one? Is it one energy to knock one back? No, it looks like it's ten or something like that. So they start up a lot and they use ten energy and then they slowly regenerate until they fall behind. So they've got enough to knock down two hits, two to three hits, every time the locusts come out. Which is not all that much considering how many locusts there are. So, yeah. 
They're pretty much good only for the first wave, and after that, they don't do all that much at all. There we go. You see that tank went down in seconds flat because there was no more PDDs here. But here we go. Loki's coming out. Are we hoping for another fungal? Gets a couple of Thors and stuff like that. Gets some infested Terrans down there. The air is backed off. So the infestors are a lot more able to do exactly what they want to do. And really, really pushing nice and hard through there. Getting a lot of stuff down. And now the Locus are a little bit more free. And they're looking pretty good. It looks like with just some pressure and some great fungal work and some great everything, Pig has finally just pushed through. And he just, I think Spear just lost a critical amount of tanks. And he just sort of fell back and said, all right, I'll, I'll be doing stuff on the high ground for now on using this ramp to my advantage, which is a really, really good idea. But I think a lot of it as well is just that the PDDs, man, they just... Harry's been having a bit of trouble with them. Just keeping enough of them out there. So they, they get used up so fast. I mean, I don't know if he can actually get enough to fully hold off the Locust continuously. Um, my answer would probably be no. I don't think it could happen. But... Yeah, it's just... I mean, the PDDs, I guess they only do so much. Oh, those tanks were just begging to be destroyed. Two more, four more. Oh, look at this point defense drone, though. That thing was saving that guy for, like, ages, man. Absolutely ages. Oh, out of range of the sport crawler. Very, very, very nice position there. Does keep a couple of uh, spine crawlers out. Opens the way for a nice Hellion attack going in there. And more stuff continuing to go down, so the PDDs can only hold so much, and then they are screwed. Oh, he can't even get in range. Oh, he's actually hitting this. All right, Pig is going to have to do something there. There we go. Bunch of Corruptors going down. The gas goes down, but the benches go down as well. Might have to reposition a uh, Spore Crawler there. Can tanks continuously going down. 44 tanks have been lost so far in this game. That is... Massive! Look at this. 45,000 versus 26,000. That is the power of the Swarm Post right there. 20,000 resources just been lost. And if you had a calculation for the Locus, he's probably sent like 100,000 resources worth of Locus out there. So, if you look at it in that point of view, then they're not a great, you know, great sort of value in terms of how much they kill, but they're free! They're free, and anything they kill is immense value. And Spear, man, he's just... He's not happy, and... I have seen in previous Masters level games, and usually the Terran player who deals with the Swarm Host is the most insane, offensive Terran player out there. You cannot play the Siege game in a long run with Swarm Host. You cannot. It doesn't matter how good you are. At the Siege game, you could be the best Siege game player in the entire world. You could be right up there with the likes of freaking Tasia and uh, MMA and all those crazy Terran players. It doesn't matter long term, you will get screwed if you play the Siege game against Locust. They are free units and bit by bit by bit they will wear you down. The only thing a Terran player can do is either harass the uh, the Zerg player into oblivion, into the point where they've just got nothing left, or you have to play smart, aggressive. It has to be smart, and it has to be aggressive. It has to be tactically brilliant, and it has to be balls to the wall, smacking the guy across the face with a wet hammer. Aggressive. That's the only way you can deal with it. And Spear, we have not seen that from him today. We've seen some great harassment. Um, he's killed a lot of workers. It doesn't matter. He hasn't killed the Swarm Post. And those guys are going to go nuts for the next 10 years. And slowly, slowly, this number is going up. It's going to continue to go up. It was at, um, I don't know what it was at before, but it's going to continue to go up. And when Pig feels that the ratio is in his favor. He'll go out and he'll do stuff like this. Chain fungus on the Vikings. Um, it's snagging a battle cruiser, taking it out. Why the hell not? He can lose units, but most of the time, 
his losses will be okay. Oh, the fungals. Chain fungal, chain fungal, chain fungal. Didn't quite get the last chain on that. Could have taken out some Vikings, which would have been beautiful. Didn't quite do it, but still good. So let's have a look. Uh, 43 minute mark. Um, 50, it's, I think it's continually going up. Yeah, it's like 23K at the moment. So it was 20K, but it went up to 23K. That's it. That's a GG, man. He's, uh, he hasn't really lost a ton of stuff, but his army is just going down at the moment. He's got, he's at six tanks. He's running low on everything. This is his last mining base. It's sort of going okay, but he's just in such an untenable position. I don't know what untenable means, but he's pretty screwed up at the moment. And you can see the hatchery is about to go down there. There's no way in hell he's got enough forces to take that hatchery back and actually build a base there. And if that base is allowed to go up and Pig is allowed to just stay there and squat there and do whatever the hell he wants, then Spear has no chance of winning this game. Not against Pig once he has that base. So that's it. Spear just gives up. Um, probably was just sick of dealing with the Locust at this point. And it just didn't work out. you really got to be aggressive. And the earlier you're aggressive, the better. The best time to go in there hard against the swarm hosts is when you've just seen the swarm host starting to be built. When there's like five or six out on the, out on the map, you go balls to the wall, you take out those five or six, and then you go absolutely nuts and start taking some stuff out. And usually you do okay because swarm hosts are good over the long term. In the short term, they don't really do a whole lot. And they do cost a lot, so they're only worth it in the long term. If you spend a whole lot of minerals building swarm hosts, and they die in like two minutes, then you are behind in terms of your army, because you spent so much on those swarm hosts, and they basically did nothing for you. So you really, really got to go out hard as soon as you see them. You can't play the waiting game with swarm hosts. You can't sit back. But it's one of the hardest things, and maybe the hardest thing for a Terran player to accomplish, is to overcome any sort of swarm hosts once they get out there. It's so insanely hard to overcome the wave of locusts and actually get in there and start hitting swarm hosts. Especially when the Zerg player gets corruptors, gets infestors, get vipers, get hydras, any sort of crazy, any sort of tech which counters air, which counters tanks, all that sort of stuff. So anyway, game number three is coming up. Pig came back in an epic fashion this game and it'll be down to the ace match in this best of three series so i'll stay tuned and i'll catch you guys in the next game in just a sec Alrighty, we are back we have spear we have pig we have an ace match coming up it is going to be awesome and my god spear going for a command center before barracks and getting owned by the scouting worker by the scouting drone very very nice stuff and actually going for gas as well. Gas before barracks. Spear's been doing all sorts of crazy stuff. We had the beautiful, beautiful build from him last game, which I am gonna do a um, playstyle video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna call it a playstyle video, but a build, a build video, just to show that off, because that is absolutely beautiful from Spear. And what's he doing now? Command center, barracks, uh, command center, gas, then barracks. What is his plan? It could be an armor again. Um, I'm really, really not sure, but we'll just have to check it out. Pig going for the, oh, uh, he's going for some crazy stuff as well. He's going hatch, hatch, pull. So that's an incredibly greedy macro style right there. And yeah, why the hell not? I mean, he's seen the spear is going for a fast command center. So why not go for the double hatch before pull and just go absolutely nuts. We'll see how it works. Definitely both players looking like they want a longer sort of game. And we can see here that gas really coming out nice and fast. Maybe he is going for the factory. Oh, sorry, not the factory, the armory once again. It'll be, it'll be a pretty awesome if he does manage to do that. So, no, not much else going on. We've got standard Hellion timing for that sort of thing. Or not, yeah, standard-ish, ish, which is pretty good. But, oh man, this map, this map, oh, the third base, tanks down here, tanks over there, and Pig will get very, very, very sad when his workers start getting killed. 
Oh man, you can even just fly a raven over there, start dropping raven bombs. That's going to be nasty. Of course you can move the workers away from raven bombs, but still, it's really, really, really bad news. Queen's going to be sniping this worker. Worker is going to get in there, is going to see gas with nobody mining it and a spawning pool. So not a lot. And he's going to see that there's no actual queen here yet. Which he's just like, yeah, no queen or something. So yeah, what do we got? Looks like it was a starport. So he's going for a very, very fast starport here. Um, against Zerg, what do we think about an early Banshee? He's going for a tech lab. Whether or not that belongs on the barracks or whether or not that's part of the starport play, I have to guess, but I'd probably say starport. Um, going for a nice medevac. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. There we go, a bunch of Hellions coming out. And maybe just some sort of drop action going on. Actually moving over here, putting that over there, and looks like it's going to be straight up mech, just like it was last game. Which is, yeah, pretty awesome. There's that third base that Spear likes to get nice and early on, building it. Um, sometimes inside his main, sometimes out as part of the wall. Fully closed off wall here, actually. I don't believe anybody can get in there, which is pretty cool. Uh, Pig, of course, has got the macro advantage at this point. He loves pushing out workers. He loves pushing out a ton of them. Getting the gas as well. Getting the baneling nest. And we should be seeing a lair come out sometime pretty soon. He needs to push out his gas a little bit. He hasn't really pushed out the gas too much at the moment. But once the gas starts coming out in, a, in decent numbers, then we will start seeing the lair come out and then muters after that and whatever else he needs to build. But he's still really, really pushing out those working numbers nice and high. Nice drop here, four Hellions. No blue flame, I don't believe, so they're not gonna be that harmful, but they're still more than harmful enough to be killing workers. There we go, going for the workers, getting right in there, right in deep with the workers. Finally being taken out. What was the body count there? Nine workers. Ouchie McOuch. That was quite a decent amount. And the fact that he's up to 52 means he would have been at 60 something if he hadn't killed those. So he needed to kill those workers. And the fact is, I'm still not sure it's going to slow Pig down much. He's still building an absolute crap load of those guys. There we go. There's a layer coming down. Continuous worker production. Building the links, getting a ton of gas. And. Yeah, he's going to have to deal with this though. Oh, single tank. Very, very nice work by Pig scouting that. He was expecting them to drop over there, but they're going to go in here, drop over there instead, which is beautiful because, of course, there's rocks. So he just, he simply can't get there. With this one, you go around the long way with Lings, so it takes like an extra minute or so. But this one, no, you can't get that tank. There is nothing he can do to kill that tank except hit the rocks and if you try hitting the rocks with lings you will find yourself with a lot of dead lings because that tank can shoot uphill if it's got high ground vision the only chance that uh pig really has is to snipe this medevac that gets rid of the high ground vision and then he can knock the rocks down he can um do whatever he wants and spiel will have to rely on scans to actually do damage here but once the while the medevac is up he can do all sorts of stuff, but the problem is he can't hit those workers. Even though some of them are maybe in range, you can't really hit them because the Medovac doesn't have vision quite enough. Oh, the Ling's absolutely everywhere. Hellion's not really getting much done there, just getting owned pretty much. Here we go, the Medovac moving back a little bit. It moves a little bit over just to see where the workers are. And this guy never quite gets in range. He's not mining these three, which is beautiful. He's not building any more workers over this point, which is good as well, because then they would move on to these other things and they would get owned if I do. If I am correct. Yeah. He can see this worker, but he can't. It's not in range of the tank. So that is why he's not attacking them. Ooh, look at all these lings moving out. Oh, look at these bailings moving out. That's quite a bit, man. This base is already off the ground. Oh, look at all these medevacs. The medevacs, uh, there we go. Beautiful, beautiful supply depots all being destroyed. And this, I like this attack, man. Pig is just like, I don't give a crap about your tank. I'm going to run in there with a crap load of bailings. I'm going to destroy everything. Look at the bailings go with the workers. Are they attacking the workers? 
I don't think they care. I think they're just letting the Lynx take care of the workers. Ouch! 29 under 68. Here come the Marines. Are the Marines going to get hit by Baneleys? Yes, they are. We have Baneleys speed at the 12 minute mark. Pig, you genius. Most people don't get that until ages later, but he has pushed out nice and hard to get Baneleys speed nice and early. And, oh man, did it pay off in there. Absolutely breathtakingly beautiful play there by Pig. Running in, destroying everything. He's got some muters out. The muters take out the Vikings. The tank is just like, WTF, mate. What the hell do I do now? And Spear is just like, yep. I will see you guys in the lower bracket. Is is it quite there? Yeah, I think it is. Um, I mean, 26 versus 10. It's not quite a GG, but I mean, 82 versus 30. You gotta start thinking that it's not that far away. <laughs> Oh, the medevac. Hitting the medevac. Oh, man. That's it. Another bunch goes down. More bad luck for Mr. Spear. At least last game, he put the hard fight in here. And this game, he's just being smacked around a lot. A lot. Uh, he's just dropping him off bit by bit to get him out. And the muter's like, mm, look at this. It's just like a Pez dispenser. You press the button and another one comes out. And the medevac's going down, so Spear's losing a ton here. His army has been quite decimated. All those drops going into the maw of the muters. His workers absolutely going downhill. He is not really rebuilding them. He's too busy rebuilding his army, but is it going to make a difference at this point? I'm not really sure that it is. Oh, man. I think this is it. I think Spear... If Pig's on his game, Pig is going to hit him. He's going to hit him hard. He's going to take him down. He's going to keep up the pressure. And I don't think that Spear can stand the pressure, given his current situation. Here we go. There's a bunch of Lings there. Not many Bane Lings, but it doesn't matter. The Lings coming in. The Muta's going nuts. And Spear gives the GG. So Spear down to the lower bracket. And Pig continues on in this tournament. Very, very nice stuff. Pig actually moving on to uh, have a fight with Arthur, I believe. Arthur at this point in the game. So he defeated Frustration in the round of 16, 2-1, which we did cast those games, which are awesome. And then Arthur went on to defeat Wally in the round of 8, which happened at the same time of this game. And so it's Arthur and Pig. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, that game isn't quite on my list, I don't think. Yeah. I'm not sure. I might have to add that to my list. I'm looking at it and I'm like, why isn't that game on my list? It really, really, really should be. So, yeah, okay, I might have to go back and I might have to change the list of games I'm casting to add that one. Because that one, I think that one definitely should be on my list. So anyway, I will catch you guys in a little while. Stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this series of games and look out for a, um, a build video with Spear's awesome, awesome um, Hellbat Marine push against Zerg because, yeah, that's awesome. So anyway, I'll catch you guys then. It's been Harry Muppet. Hope you enjoyed the Harry Smash Pig versus Spear.